Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about hydronosomes and mitosomes. But to understand them, first we need to review briefly mitochondria. Mitochondria are organelles that carry out essential metabolic functions in eukaryotic cells. So remember that eukaryotic cells are cells that are found in uh, multicellular organisms like plants and animals and fungi. There's also many unicellular eukaryotes, various kinds of parasites, um, and algae, for example. Um, and, and so these are distinct from prokaryotic cells like bacteria. And so it's the eukaryotic cells that have the organelles like mitochondria. And some of the metabolic functions that these mitochondria carry out include aerobic respiration, which is probably the function you're most familiar with. So aerobic respiration is where oxygen is that final electron acceptor. Uh, and so it's respiration that occurs using um, the electronegative properties of oxygen. Another major metabolic function is heme biosynthesis. Heme is a critical compound for a lot of different uh, kinds of proteins, including catalases, uh, cytochromes, um, myoglobin, hemoglobin, those kinds of things. And then also uh, the, the final function we're going to talk about today is iron sulfur cluster assembly. And iron sulfur clusters are important in various redox proteins, including those in the electron transport chain that um, is being used in aerobic respiration. So that's why mitochondria are important. Now some eukaryotes they don't have fully functional mitochondria that do all of these things. Um, and these are primarily anaerobic uh, types of eukaryotes that don't use oxygen, where oxygen may even be toxic for them. And instead of having these fully functioning mitochondria, they only have a couple of different forms of degenerate mitochondria. What this means is that sometime in their evolutionary history, they had fully functioning mitochondria, but over time they didn't need those functions and ultimately lost them, having now these degenerate mitochondria that only have a subset of the original functions. This is an example of reductive evolution. So that's an example of reductive evolution where you have um, sort of a more complex thing become a more simple thing over the, the period of evolution. And of course that's true again, just for some eukaryotes, most eukaryotes still have their fully functioning mitochondria, including humans. So now let's talk about two of these types of degenerate mitochondria, hydrogenosomes and mitosomes. We'll start with hydrogenosomes. These are found in species of trichomonas. Um, including Trichomonas vaginalis, which causes the sexually transmitted infection, trichomoniasis. It's also found in some other species of fungi and ciliates. Usually hydrogenomes lack their own genome. So it's important to realize that why, while mitochondria, as well as chloroplasts, another organelle, actually have their own genome inside eukaryotic cells, um, hydrogenosomes typically don't have their own genome. They've lost that during the course of this reductive evolution when it just wasn't needed anymore. They do still produce some ATP, which is also the goal of aerobic respiration up here. Um, some carbon dioxide is produced at the same time, and there's also a byproduct of hydrogen gas, so H2 gas. And that is where they get their name hydrogenosomes because they generate this hydrogen byproduct. So now let's talk about the second kind of degenerate mitochondria, that is mitosomes. These are found in species of Giardia, like Giardia lamblia, which is also known as Giardia intestinalis, um, as well as um, Entamoeba species. For example, uh, Entamoeba histolytica, both the Giardia and Entamoeba species that I mentioned are common intestinal parasites. You get them um, either by drinking contaminated water or eating contaminated food. Um, 
and so they have important repercussions for human health. Also, there are some other anaerobes and microaerophiles that uh, have mitosomes. These mitosomes also do not have their own genome. And unlike hydrogenosomes, they actually do not produce their own ATP. Now, all three of these, meaning the mitochondria, the hydrogenosomes, and the mitosomes, all three carry out this iron sulfur cluster assembly. This is one of the um, sort of main pieces of evidence that suggests common evolutionary history. Again, meaning that mitosomes and mitosomes and hydrogenosomes descended from mitochondria. So way back early on in the history of the eukaryotic lineage, when cells like Trichomonas ancestors and Giardia and Entamoeba ancestors split off from other eukaryotic cells, like those that were going to lead to animals and plants and fungi, um, they, um, they, they already had these mitochondria, and then over time, their mitochondria became degenerate, losing functions, forming the modern-day hydrogenosomes and mitosomes. So we also know that this sort of degenerative process, this reductive evolution, has happened multiple times. So it happened in the Trichomonas lineage, it happened in the Giardia and Entamoeba lineage. Um, it also happened for some fungi, some other ciliates, and some other anaerobes and microaerophiles. So it's happened multiple times. If you are interested in learning a little bit more about things like anaerobes and microaerophiles uh, and aerobic respiration, then I've got some videos you can check out, including on bacteria oxygen preferences, which will tell you more about these terms here, as well as an introduction to cellular respiration, where you can learn more about this aerobic respiration process. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching Biology Professor.